All right, here's a key to your, uh, your little activity. Um, the problem that sets up here says that there's a boy up 15 meters on a tower. So you can see in the diagram. Throws a ball with a horizontal velocity. That's velocity in the x direction of 25 meters per second. How far does the ball travel horizontally? Remember, the acceleration due to gravity is in the y direction only. So we call that g, about 10 meters per second squared. And if you use that value and you substitute it into your kinematic equation, um, d equals vt plus 1 half at squared, you can get these two equations that we were using in our initial notes. Uh, these are the two equations to help relate the horizontal x component of its motion and the uh, y component, the vertical uh, component of its motion. So let's use the guess method here. Now first off, um, it's initially thrown at 25 meters per second. You know that that's velocity right? But it's horizontal, so that's in the x direction. Um, the boy is on top of a, a tower, and that's a vertical direction, so that you know that's the, uh, the displacement in the y direction. That's the distance that the ball is going to fall in the y direction. And the question is, can you hit like this target down here? Like how far does it go? If you know the initial velocity and the height. So the unknown in question is the uh, dx, the distance horizontally. So let's just fill out the guess method. First, um, we know dy is 15 meters. Uh, we know velocity in the x direction, vx as we call it, is 25 meters per second. Uh, the question of how far does the ball travel horizontally, the unknown, that is the uh, distance in the x direction. And the equations, same two equations. So we have to use, oh, okay, dx is the unknown, so we have a dx equation. Let's plug it in. Uh, distance in the x direction equals velocity in the x direction times time. Well, what do we know? Let's substitute our givens. Well, we know the velocity in the x direction. So we get, let's just plug that in. We get uh, 25 meters per second times how much time? Oh, we don't know the time. So we can't solve this yet. So go to the second equation. Uh, distance in the y direction equals 5t squared. Well, we know the distance the ball is going to fall in the y direction. It falls 15 meters. And so to solve that, we divide both sides by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So we get 3 on the left side of the equation equals t squared on the right side of the equation. To get rid of the square power, we now have to take the square root of both sides. Square root of t squared is t. So what's the square root of 3? Uh, get out your calculator. Hit the second x squared button. You get the square root, 3. Enter, and it says, you know, square root of 3 equals square root of 3. So if you want to approximate it, you could take second square root, and when you type in a 3, you could put a decimal point, press enter, and that'll assume you want a decimal, 1.73. So I get the time of about 1.73 seconds. And if that's the time it takes to fall in the y direction, it's also the same amount of time it takes to fall in the x direction. So we can substitute that time value right here. So what's 25 times 1.73? Take that answer, multiply it by 25, and I get 43.3. So the distance this object travels in the x direction is 43.3 meters. I just rounded it to my three significant figures. Um, so we know that this question mark here in the diagram is going to be about 43.3 meters before the ball hits the ground and lands in the target. So if you want to break down the trajectory of this ball launched off a table, like your coins, like you shot coins off the table, you have to break it into two components, right? We just talked about this. The horizontal component, or x component, and then the vertical component, or the y component. And if you want to, last question, describe the differences in the velocities of these two components. 
the x and y components of velocity vectors are drawn above. Remember we talked about this? Well, the velocity in the x direction is uh, simply equal to the distance in the x direction divided by time, and it's constant. There is a constant velocity. And that's only true in the x direction. But in the y direction, it's accelerating. And so the velocity is changing. It's, it's like there's zero y velocity here. Then one second later, it speeds up to 10 meters per second, then 20 meters per second, then 30 meters per second. The y component's getting bigger and bigger and bigger because it's accelerating due to gravity at a rate of 10 meters per second squared. So you can solve for the y component of its velocity by just saying simply 10 times t. Because that tells you the velocity increases by 10 meters per second each second. So this is, this is acceleration um, in the y direction. And we call that acceleration in the y direction g, which is approximately 10 meters per second squared.